Good morning to you. It's Wednesday. We will continue now with Acts chapter 17 and we'll finish it today. So from verse 32. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some began to sneer. But others said, we shall hear you again concerning this. So Paul went out from their midst. But some men joined him and believed, among whom were Diosones, the Arapagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So here we see the usual reaction when the word of God is preached, especially when we speak about the resurrection of the dead. There are those who sneer, who laugh and just laugh it off and don't believe it. Then there are those who are interested and say, we want to hear more concerning this. And then thankfully, there are those who uh, accept this word, believe and come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We should not be surprised that uh, these reactions are there. That's the normal way it has always been. Wherever the word of God is preached, there'll be those who reject it, who will just laugh it away uh, to their own detriment. Because if they don't repent of their sins, as we saw yesterday, they will face God's judgment and uh, they face a terrible eternity. Then there are those who are not yet convinced but want to know more. Um, we rejoice with those people, for those people, because we have an opportunity then to share more and more with them. And we pray that God would grant them a true and a living faith. Because those who seek will find, those who ask will have it given to them, and those who knock it will be open for them. And then, of course, there's great joy about those who just accept God's word and believe. What we need to remember is that we cannot force anybody to believe in God. We cannot force anybody to repent of their sins and turn and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We encourage them. We show them the way. We preach the word in our lives and in the words that we say and everything that we do. But it is God, the Holy Spirit, who brings conviction to the heart. It is God, the Holy Spirit, who grants a true and a living faith. But we need not be surprised that there'll be those who laugh and who reject and sneer and make fun of us. That's okay. We just move on. We, we forgive them and... We love them anyway, and, and we pray for their souls. And there'll be those, as I said, who will want to know more, uh, be ready to uh, explain more to them and to open up the scriptures to them. And then, of course, there are the ones who just hear God's word, believe it, accept it. Uh, my policy in life has always been God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Uh, not everybody has come to that conclusion yet, but the sooner we do, the freer we are. So... Also remember that the resurrection is the central part of our faith. If Christ isn't risen from the dead, then we're wasting our time. But Christ has risen from the dead. If Jesus had stayed in the tomb, then I wouldn't be bringing you these messages every day because we'd have no hope. Our hope lies on the resurrection. And it has happened, and our resurrection will happen on God's given day. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. As we begin a new day, we thank you once again for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you that you didn't leave Jesus in the grave, but you raised him from the dead. You broke the power of sin and death. And Lord, that you are the resurrection and the life, and that those who believe in you will live even though they die, and whoever lives and believes in you will never die. We have eternal life if we believe in you. And so, Father, we just bless you and praise you and thank you and worship you. And we pray, Lord, that you would just use us for your kingdom. May our light shine brightly today and always. Father God, we thank you for the country in which we live in, and we pray for our leaders and those in authority, that you give them wisdom and understanding and discernment, help them to navigate through these times. We pray, Lord, for uh, continuing peace uh, in places where there has been war. We pray, Lord, for um, a cessation of all fighting. We pray, Lord, for for peace and we pray lord for a solution we pray heavenly father that people would learn to live together to respect one another heavenly father all things are possible for you and so we just turn to you and we pray that many many hearts would turn to you we pray for the sick the dying and all who are in need we pray for those who are living in fear those who are lost but we pray especially for those who are lost for those who do not know you lord that today would be the day that your Holy Spirit would convict their hearts and bring them to repentance and trust in you. Thank you, Lord, that anyone who calls upon your name and faith will be saved. Thank you that you are a God of mercy, compassion, and love. May your love shine in and through us today. May we be the best version of ourselves that we can possibly be. You know what all our needs are, and we thank you, Lord, that you meet those needs, and we bless and praise you and worship you. We ask that you take us by the hand today and lead and guide us. And now hear us as we join together in praying, our Father who art in heaven. 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.